Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today for this online tech talk. My name is Rachel Fu, and I am a senior technical product manager with the AWS Database Migration Service. So today I'm going to talk about a recent feature launch, which is DMS schema conversion. So in this presentation, we will first cover a brief overview of AWS Database Migration Service, then an overview of the new DMS schema conversion feature. Finally, we'll run through a demo of how the new feature works. So one quick note before we begin, um, at any time during this session, if you have questions, feel free to post them in your uh, viewing channel. Uh, we have experts who are monitoring to be able to answer your questions. So DMS focuses on discovering and assessing uh, a fleet of databases, and then subsequently converting and migrating them to AWS. And this is all with minimal downtime and zero data loss. So DMS supports a wide variety of sources, both relational and non-relational, and supports an even wider variety of targets. So when you're migrating with DMS, you can keep your application running during the migration, since DMS provides continuous replication um, by leveraging you know, the source database's underlying change data capture or redo log type of technology. So in the assessment phase of migration, DMS provides Fleet Advisor, um, and this is really geared towards customers looking to move a fleet of databases to the cloud. So this tool inventories and analyzes your data to quickly create a migration plan. In the mobilized phase, AWS provides the Schema Conversion Tool, or SCT, um, and this tool assesses schema compatibility of source databases. Um, it attempts to convert all schema and code objects, in the migrate and modernize phase, DMS migrates the data um, with features like pre-migration assessments and data validation to help ensure that the migration is completed properly. In today's session, we're really going to focus on this mobilized phase. So the existing AWS schema conversion tool is locally installed, and it really offers three main features. So the first feature is generating an assessment report that provides a detailed summary of the recommended best target engine for migration, as well as a detailed level of effort in order to complete the migration. So SCT also attempts to convert all schema and code objects to the target engine, and this includes stored procedures and functions as well. So finally, SCT also has local extractors for migrating data warehouses to Redshift. This type of migration also includes the conversion of ETL-related business logic so that the ETL processes can be run in AWS Glue. So because AWS SET is locally installed and lives outside of DMS, customers have to move back and forth between DMS and this external tool to be able to complete a migration. With the launch of DMS schema conversion, DMS now provides SCT functionality integrated into DMS as a fully managed capability. So DMS now offers an end-to-end -end database migration solution under one centrally managed service. And this makes it simpler and faster to plan, assess, convert, and migrate to the cloud. This can reduce manual pre-migration tasks from taking something like weeks or months uh, down to something like hours. So today, DMS schema conversion supports conversion between Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server to MySQL or Postgres. And we have plans to expand uh, the engines that we support as well. So now let's take a look at the features that are provided by DMS schema conversion. So similar to SCT, DMS schema conversion provides a schema assessment report that summarizes all of the schema conversion tasks. So the summary tab shows the number of items that DMS schema conversion can automatically convert um, for database storage objects and database code objects. So this tab also provides an estimate of the required effort to create those schema items in your target database instance that are equivalent to the ones in your source. So the action items tab contains a list of items that DMS schema conversion can't automatically convert to a format that's compatible with the target database engine. For each action item, DMS schema conversion provides the description of the issue, as well as prescriptive guidance on manual conversion. 
DMS schema conversion groups similar action items and then displays the number of occurrences. So after connecting to your source and target databases, you can convert your source database objects to a format that's compatible with your target database. DMS schema conversion displays your source database schema on the left panel in the tree view format, and then the targets on the right. So each node of the database tree is what we call lazy loaded. When you choose a node in the tree view, DMS schema conversion requests the schema information from your source database at that time. If you want to browse the database objects faster, you can load the metadata so that DMS schema conversion reads the database metadata and stores the information on an Amazon S3 bucket. You can convert the whole database schema or you can choose any schema item from your source database to convert. If the schema item that you choose depends on a parent item, then DMS schema conversion also generates the schema for that parent item. So for example, when you choose a table to convert, DMS schema conversion creates the converted table and the database schema that the table is in. So after you've converted your source database objects, you can choose an object in the left panel to view the source and converted code for that object. You can also see the properties or parameters of the object that you've selected. So DMS schema conversion automatically stores the converted code as part of your migration project. It doesn't apply these code changes to your target database automatically. When you're ready, applying changes is an action that you initiate with a simple click in the console. If you don't want to apply the converted code directly to your target database in DMS schema conversion, you can save the code to a file as a SQL script. You can then review these SQL scripts, edit them where necessary, and then manually apply these SQL scripts to your target database. All right, so now let's jump into the demo. So here is what schema conversion looks like inside of DMS. So we have this new section in the side navigation called convert that has these new entities, migration projects, instance profiles, and data providers. So migration projects are projects that are used to migrate, and this is where DMS schema conversion is launched from. Instance profiles are common security and network settings across different projects. And then finally, data providers are information about source and target database. Um, effectively, it's the connection information. So let's go ahead and uh, start with creating an instance profile. So here we can provide uh, the name for the instance profile, optional description in ARN. Uh, you have options for IPv6. Um, and then we're choosing standard AWS properties like VPC and the subnets. So here we also select uh, an S3 bucket where we want to save the migration project. And then we also need to provide the IAM role that gives DMS access to that S3 bucket. So now we can go ahead and create that instance profile. So next, we're going to go in and create the data providers that are needed for source and target. So in this case, um, we are going to uh, connect to a SQL Server RDS database instance. Um, you can give a descriptive ARN if you want. Uh, here we have a standard server name, port, database name as the connection information. Um, even though we're using an AWS resource for this demo, you could, of course, put the address of an on-prem system instead. So we've created our source uh, data provider. Next, we're going to create the target data provider, which is an RDS for MySQL uh, target. So the migration we're looking at is from SQL Server to MySQL. Um, so similarly, we're going to put in the name. We've got the connection information populated, and we're not using SSL for, for this demo. So from here, we can go and create the migration project. Uh, so we'll create that uh, new migration project. We'll give it a a name, um, and then we're going to select the instance profile that we created. And then we're going to select what we're migrating from, so our source uh, SQL Server database. The database credentials are stored in Secrets Manager. So here we select the secret ID that contains the credentials, and then the IAM role that gives DMS access to Secrets Manager. So for the target, we're similarly selecting uh, you know, our MySQL data provider, and then again, the secret ID with the database credentials. 
and then that same IAM role to give DMS access to that secret. So optionally, you can add a transformation. Um, so for this case, we are going to uh, add a suffix, uh, which is called just converted. Um, but as you saw, you can do other transformations as well. So we're going to go in and create that migration project. So when we select the migration project that we created, we can click on the schema conversion tab. And this is where we're going to launch schema conversion. So when we hit launch, we're launching an EC2 instance to do the assessment and conversion for you. So normally this takes some time, but we're speeding it up for the demo. So once the instance is launched, it brings up the IDE, um, which is really similar to SCT with the source on the left and the target on the right. So note that uh, DMS schema conversion uses database metadata um, for doing uh, assessments and conversions. It doesn't access any customer data. So we're going to first choose the database that we want to run an analysis on. So in this case, it's the one at the top. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, run the assessment. So after we run the assessment, um, we're going to get the assessment report results here. Um, and this is telling us you know, how much can easily be converted uh, between our source and target. So you can browse down through the tree to see each individual item so that you can see the assessment reports down at the level of you know, a given table or a given procedure that you choose. Um, and this gives you an idea of you know, how easy or hard this particular um, item is going to be to convert. So when you select an object on the left, you can also drill down and see the SQL code um, that's used to create that procedure. So you can then um, export the assessment report to either CSV or PDF. And you can use this document to help support a business case or uh, assign manual conversion action items to different database specialists. So here we're going to view that assessment report uh, PDF. Um, it's generated in your S3 bucket. Um, so we can take a look here. It's got a summary of those uh, charts, an executive summary, um, and then also kind of a listing of the action items. All right, so once that's done, um, the next step is to uh, convert the database. So we see that uh, once we've done this conversion, so we'll see that all the objects on the left are converted to the right um, in our MySQL database instance. So we can see we have some case differences and the schemes have been renamed according to those transformation rules um, that we specified. So as you click into each object, you can see what the original SQL Server code looked like on the left and then the converted MySQL code on the right. So as we dig down into this, um, We can see that you know, not everything is automatically converted. So we can see an action item that we can dig into to see, OK, what do we need to do um, to handle this conversion manually? Um, for other objects that were you know, converted automatically, uh, we can see no action items. And then we can see from the summary um, you know, that there was 100 uh, percent conversion automatically happened. So at this point now, we can uh, apply the changes to the target. So as I mentioned before, the code changes are stored in the migration project. And so here is where we're actually um, applying those changes to the target database. So the other option that we have is um, to uh, save the code changes uh, as SQL. Um, and so this is what we're doing here. Um, and then we can view the SQL code that is uh, saved as a zip file to our S3 bucket um, as well. So we'll go take a look at our S3 bucket, um, and then we can uh, view that SQL code um, that was saved here. So instead of you know, applying the code changes um, in DMS schema conversion, we could look at this SQL code, we could edit it, um, do whatever we need here, and then we could use it to apply the changes manually. All right, so now let's go in and take a look at our target database. So here we can see the converted objects. Um, effectively, we have empty tables defining the schema uh, with that converted uh, suffix that we added. And then from here, we can move on to um, our next step of migrating the data. 
All right, and that concludes the presentation. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you have a great rest of the week.